Hey everyone, Kelly here. Well, I had planned a totally different video, but sometimes life doesn't go as planned. So I had to make an audible. Is that what they call it? I don't watch football. So I had to change my plans, okay? That probably wasn't right at all, but I changed my plans. Before I go on, I just wanna remind everyone to like and subscribe if you like these videos so that you don't miss out on any of my bookish ramblings. Originally, I wanted to do a reading journal video. Here's my reading journal. I love writing in a reading journal. I think it's so much fun. I have always loved stationery and office supplies and all that jazz. <laughs> as well as books, so it just made sense, like, hey, start a reading journal. So I wanted to do a reading journal video today, but I did it wrong because I'm dumb sometimes. <laughs> so I took the video, it didn't work out, c'est la vie. So instead, I'll just show you quickly what I did for this month. I do a really simple reading journal. Um, I tried to do more in-depth stuff when I first started, but it just got to be too much and I don't want it to feel like work because then I'm never going to do it, right? So this is my May spreads. I have the title page and then I have my TBR or books on my radar because I probably won't get through all of them. But it's just something I like to have a list of books that are on my mind to you know, if I'm ever stuck and I want to read something else, I'll go to my list and say to myself, oh, remember you wanted to read this book? So that's why I do a TBR. As you can see, it's empty because this video will be talking about the TBR. So I left it blank to not give spoilers. Next up, I do a books hauled or unhauled spread. Now I used to do a calendar of sorts where I would color in each square of each day that I read and not even how many pages I read, just having read anything, any book at all that day. But then I started to forget to color in the boxes. And then at the end of the month, I was like, did I even read this month? Because I kept forgetting to color in the boxes. So I just got rid of that. Then I have my books read spread. And that's where I can really see what I actually read versus what I wanted to read on my TBR. So yeah. And then my last two spreads are favorite quotes of the month and then favorite book of the month at the top and my stats. So the total amount of pages I read and the total amount of books. And that's it. Really simple. I have fun doing it. Um, <laughs> I love the little stickers and the little washi tapes that I have. And you know, I, I am not loaded. So I just use what I have and I try to pick a color scheme and go with that. So yeah, this month it's peachy peachy colors <laughs> with oranges and flowers and sloths and a couple monarch butterflies because why not? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. All right, getting into my TBR. So for this month, I'm not super ambitious. I don't know. I am drowning in books. I just keep buying more or getting them on my Kobo because I pay a monthly fee to do the Kobo Plus program. And that gets you like as many Kobo Plus books as you can for that monthly rate. So for example, I might see an ebook that's $10, but if you have Kobo Plus, it's included with your monthly fee. So I get a lot of books through Kobo Plus. <laughs> do I read them all? No. So I got to work on that. <laughs> but anyways, not sponsored by Kobo. Would love to be. I'm not. But moving right along. So I don't have super high hopes for this month in terms of how many books I'm going to read. But I have a couple that I definitely want to get through. So the first book I want to get to is The Intimacy Experiment by Rosie Dannon. I will not go into detail on this one because I just talked about it on my romance book video. So I will link that here. But this looks like so much fun. Fun, and I loved the first one. So I just, I need a romance to get me, to just keep me going because I've been reading a lot of fantasy lately and I love fantasy, but I find after a while it just becomes a lot. Like it's a lot of info to maintain and keep filed away and just, wow, it's it gets a lot at times. So I just need something light and fun and this doesn't look very long. This one is... Oh, there's reader questions in the back. Okay, okay. Maybe it's gonna be a podcast pick. Who knows? 
I doubt it. But I like when they have questions in the back. I think it's fun. So there's just over 300 pages. Yeah, there's just over 300 pages. So I can totally get through this and hopefully stay on track with the other books I want to read this month. The next book I want to read this month, I am... I've been reading it for a while now because I kept getting distracted by other books I had to read or other books that caught my eye when I was trying to finish the one that I'm going to talk to you about. And that would be Siege and Storm by Leigh Bardugo. Now I don't have a physical copy because I've been reading the ebook on my Kobo. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I haven't finished yet. Honestly, I started reading this, God, when did I start reading this? March 9th? What? Okay, so I started this on March 9th. I clearly have not finished it yet. I am now about 60% of the way and I just kept getting distracted by other books that I either had to read for the podcast or things that I was like, oh my god, the new From Blood Nash book is out. So I had to read that right away, you know. So I'm getting back to it and my sister Olivia is on my case to finish this series. So I'm trying, Olivia. I'm trying. So... <laughs> I'm 60% of the way through. I am enjoying it. I'm, I feel even more motivated now to finish the Grisha verse because I just finished the TV show on Netflix, which I did a review about. So I will link that here as well. So I really need to finish this because my sister is dying to talk to me about everything and I want to know what happens. So yeah, that is my top priority. I'm actually reading that tonight. So hopefully I will finish it tomorrow. And yeah, that is on to the next one, which is Ruin and Rising. So we'll see. I don't want to go into the synopsis because I'm worried about people who maybe haven't read the first one, Shadow and Bone. So let me just read the synopsis of Shadow and Bone super quickly. Surrounded by enemies, the once great nation of Ravka has been torn in two by the Shadowfold, a swath of near impenetrable darkness crawling with monsters who feast on human flesh. Now its fate may rest on the shoulders of one lonely refugee. Alina Starkov has never been good at anything, but when her regiment is attacked on the fold and her best friend is brutally injured, Alina reveals a dormant power that saves his life a power that could be the key to setting her war-ravaged country free. So yeah, I'm reading the second one. I want to finish that and then get to the third one because then I'm supposed to read the King of Scars duology. <laughs> now, do I think I can get through four Grisha verse books this month? No. <laughs> do I hope? Yeah, but I don't think that's realistic. So I want to say that they're all on my TBR this month, but I don't think so. I mean, we'll see. I I don't know if I'm going to be able to stay in one universe for four books in a row. I don't know. I find it very hard to stay in any world for a long time without a break, even if I really love it, because it just becomes a lot for me. So I don't know. I might need to put in another romance, which leads me to my next hopeful book that I will read this month, which is Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. Now, I also just talked about this one in my romance book video, so I will not go into detail about the synopsis, but I mean, it just looks like a lot of fun and I need fun. Who doesn't need fun? So I will try to get to this one as well. This next book is actually a novella, so I have total confidence in myself that I can get this done fairly quickly, but I've been looking at it for a long time and I finally bought it on sale on my Kobo. So I am definitely going to read this one and that would be Ring Shout by P. J. Lee Clark. I hope I'm saying that right. This looks so good, okay, and I don't normally go for sci-fi, but it just, it looks really good. Like, I don't know. I like Personally, I like sci-fi that deals with the fantastical, like, creatures and, you know, it's a little spooky. I don't mind a little bit of spookiness, okay? I can't do, <laughs> I can't do gore or anything. I don't mind reading it, but I'd rather not see that type of movie. But anyways, I don't really read a lot of sci-fi, but this sounds so good. Let me just let you in on this story, okay? A dark fantasy historical novella that gives a supernatural twist to the Ku Klux Klan's reign of terror. D.W. Griffith is a sorcerer and the birth of a nation is a spell that drew upon the darkest thoughts and wishes from the heart of America. Now, rising in power and prominence, the Klan has a plot to unleash hell on earth. Luckily, 
Maurice Boudreau has a magic sword and a head full of tails. When she's not running bootleg whiskey through Prohibition, Georgia, she's fighting monsters she calls Ku Kluxes. She's damn good at it, too. But to confront this ongoing evil, she must journey between worlds to face nightmares made flesh and her own demons. Together with a foul-mouthed sharpshooter and a Harlem hellfighter, Marie sets out to save a world from the hate that would consume it. Oh, it just sounds so good. On my Kobo, I think it said it was 80 pages. I can do that in a night, okay? So definitely gonna get to that. The last two books I wanna get to this month, hopefully, are actually audiobooks because I got them on sale for a two for one on Audible. So the first book is a nonfiction and it is What Happened to You? Conversations on Trauma, Resilience and Healing by Oprah Winfrey and Bruce D. Perry. This sounded so interesting to me. I don't know who Bruce D. Perry is. I obviously know who Oprah is because I don't live under a rock, okay? <laughs> Lots, I mean, it might feel like it right now in the pandemic, but I don't live under a rock. So <laughs> it's read by the two authors, which I love getting audiobooks that are read by the authors, especially nonfiction, because most of the time fiction isn't read by the author. But I'll touch on that a little later. But this book is about trauma that we experience and how it shapes our lives down the road. So it says, have you ever wondered why did I do that? Or why can't I just control my behavior? Others may judge our reactions and think what's wrong with that person. When questioning our emotions, it's easy to place the blame on ourselves, holding ourselves and those around us to an impossible standard. It's time we started asking a different question. Through deeply personal conversations, Oprah Winfrey and renowned brain and trauma expert, Dr. Bruce Perry, offer a groundbreaking and profound shift from asking what's wrong with you to what happened to you. Here, Winfrey shares stories from her own past, understanding through experience the vulnerability that comes from facing trauma and adversity at a young age. Oh, honestly, like I watched her show every afternoon with my mom, three o'clock, was it three o'clock or four o'clock <laughs> after school? And hearing her stories of her life, it's just, oh, it's so heartbreaking at times, but also so inspirational. So wow, I mean, good for her to use that to help other people first in her show, but also now in this book. So yeah, I am so excited. It says she and Dr. Perry focus on understanding people, behavior and ourselves. It's a subtle but profound shift in our approach to trauma. And it's one that allows us to understand our pasts in order to clear a path to our future, opening the door to resilience and healing in a proven powerful way. Oh my God, I'm so excited. This is definitely gonna be like therapy. <laughs> But I'm excited, okay? Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, as a person, I'm excited. As an actor, I am super excited because, I mean, I think actors, especially great actors, we're little like sociologists, anthropologists, psychologists, like we're here to study people, okay? We're here to study people and to bring their stories to life in a truthful way. So I cannot wait to listen to this book with the better weather coming, I'm gonna be walking the dog a lot more and listening to books. So cannot wait. Yeah. And the last book that's on my TBR for this month is another audiobook, like I mentioned, and it is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. So I had just said that I love listening to audiobooks that are narrated by the authors, and normally they are nonfiction books that are narrated by the authors. This is an exception because Neil Gaiman has a wonderful voice <laughs> and he's just such a great storyteller. So he is narrating this book. I also listened to a bit of the audiobook for Neverwhere, which I read slash listened to for the podcast. And his voice is just so nice. Like I can't imagine being one of his kids and listening to him at bedtime. Like I'd probably be asleep <laughs> right away. <laughs> because he's just so good. So, but anyways, this sounded like a lot of fun. And I saw a trailer for a new play of this that they're doing in the West End in England. So, I mean, I won't be going to that. Maybe one day I would love to go to the West End, but it just sounded so good. And it's a really short one. It says it's only five hours and 48 minutes. So 
I think I can get through that this month, hopefully. But in case you aren't aware of what this story is about, it says, Sussex, England. A middle-aged man returns to his childhood home to attend a funeral. He is drawn to the farm at the end of the road, where, when he was seven, he encountered a most remarkable girl, Letty Hempstock. He hasn't thought of Letty in decades, and yet sitting by the pond, a pond that she claimed was an ocean, the unremembered past comes flooding back. Forty years earlier, a man committed suicide in a stolen car at this farm at the end of the road. Like a fuse on a firework, his death lit a touch paper and resonated in unimaginable ways. The darkness was unleashed, something scary and thoroughly incomprehensible to a little boy. And Letty, magical, comforting, wise beyond her years, promised to protect him, no matter what. Oh, I'm so excited! This one says it's a stirring, terrifying, and elegic? Like elegy? Elegiac? Elegiac? Fable, as delicate as a butterfly's wing and as menacing as a knife in the dark. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> Neil! Neil, why? <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't wait to listen to that. I think it's... <laughs> I think I'm going to be walking Linus and, you know, going on my merry way. And then I'm going to be <laughs> struck by this knife in the dark, apparently. What the hell? But I'm really excited. That's it for me today. Am I going to get through these books? Who knows? But that's my plan. So at the end of the month, we'll see how I did. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe so you don't miss anything. And as always, I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye!